Man, it's crazy, man. QB1 is talking, man. He talks about the departure of Brian Johnson. He also talks about Saquon Barkley joining the ball club. And then he talks about lessons learned last year during the collapse of the Philadelphia Eagles, starting 10-1 and one and finishing, you know, how they started, man. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. He's hell of a player. Uh, he's going to be a He's on this side now, so that's cool. And, you know, I think for him, um, even in a short time of us having OTAs, you know, you hear about the type of person he is, the type of um, leader he is in a room, um, the energy he brings to a room, and, and that's something that you can appreciate and it's something I appreciate already. Um, just us, you know, competing in sprints, you know, or competing on the squat rack or, or doing anything things like that where we're challenging one another, those are the things that, that set the set, that set the, the thermostat for uh, what the team is supposed to follow, you know, and and um, you know everything everything we're talking about doing is just, just competing um, and, and, and going through these moments together and experiencing these things, these things together and really uh, pushing one another. And so um, I think uh, he's been great with that. I'm good to build a relationship with him uh, just just in a short notice and and uh, we'll continue to build on that. Until 2022. It's been a minute since we spoke. Um, you know, I think, I think Brian, um, you know, I think the best of him. Um, he's been a, a huge part of my development and, and my uh, my time here as an Eagle, you know. And um, and I, it's been three years um, as being a starter. Uh, three years, right? Yeah, yeah he's, been, he's been a part of all of that, you know, and so, I'm um, going into the, the fourth year of that this year, you know, um, it, it'll be great, but I think he's still more than capable of being uh, a big time um, head coach in this league. I think he's on trajectory to do that still. Um, you know, I just didn't think it was the right time for him. Um, and, and that's that. You. Situation, everything that we experience, obviously there is uh, something that you can learn from it, you know, and I think the importance of us just continue to navigate uh, things together, stay together. Um, the importance of the work, um, the foundation that we have for ourselves um, and the culture uh, that we that we live by, I think those things have kind of uh, reinforced. I think those things are, have, have come up in, in terms of importance. And so, um, you know, you, you have the off-season program, you have every individual in this building, uh, attacking different things to try and better themselves and help the team and um, understand, you know, you get to a point where everybody's given a role and um, everybody's understanding their responsibility they hold for this team. And so um, just, just attacking that, you know, but I, I think the number one thing is understanding the work comes first and everything. T. Smith press conference was today. He talked about his contract and things of that nature. Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni also spoke at the podium today, and them boys was dropping jewels. Let's get into it. Yeah, man. So, um, Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I'm the best reporting on the Eagles. Let's get into it real quick, man. So, Devontae Smith, man, you know, he took the podium and he talked about, you know, how much you know of a sports town Philadelphia is? Love it. They um, uh, they live and breathe Philly. I mean, not only us, but basketball, baseball, everything. I mean, they they love it, and you want to be in a city like that. And I always say, I don't think there's a better sports city than Philadelphia. You know, and just how grateful he was. You know, just just have how the fans have the team back and things of that nature, and just coming into this culture of Philadelphia. You know, you said he said he prayed on it. It was on his heart. You know what I mean? And God told him that this was supposed to happen and this is where he was supposed to be. He also spoke about, you know, his relationship with A.J. Brown and how it's very important that those guys have been supporting each other this entire time throughout his journey and throughout A.J. coming to the team and things of that nature as well. Been able to play many more years alongside A.J., who I've grown very close to. <laughs> Me and A.J., we talk every day. We call each other every day. We make sure that we talk on the phone every day. With this football it's life. Last night we had the kids on the phone talking, you know, babies just sitting there doing a baby talk. To be able to go out there knowing that guys who have similar stories, guys who have the same, you know, passion. Hey, hey, what do? The f I'm talking about? The dedication that we have to this game it means a lot to just go out here and be able to continue to do it alongside of him. 
Me too, bro. Oh, they talk every day, man. They, they you, you know, they, they seem to have a bond to where they thrive off one another. And you know, uh, Smitty also talked to, uh, talked about that. You know, it's good to see, man. You know, they give me the Isaac Bruce Tory Holt vibe. You know, man, that was the first like one two punch that I can remember from my young uh, watching days uh, over there with the Rams and things of that nature with Kirk Cousins. Those guys was dangerous, man. And Smitty and AJ are like. The best duo in the National Football League, man. You can't even really sugarcoat it. You got some guys that come close, Hill and Waddle. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they're a real close second in my opinion, but I think it got to go to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith because they just complement each other way, way, way too well. And, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles did their due diligence about getting ahead of this thing early, man. So the real jewels, though, the jewels of the day, in my opinion, was dropped by Howie Roseman, man. Howie Roseman came out here and dropped some jewels in this year's draft. I mean, to the fact that, you know, there's no sugar cool and you could tell how he is being transparent. You know what I mean? And I want to talk about some of the things. I want to break this down like it was like game film almost, man. You know, Howie Roseman was talking, man. Howie Roseman talked about the draft philosophy. What, what we try to do to the best of our abilities is go into the draft trying to fill as many needs as we possibly can through free agency um, so that we can be open to the best players in the draft. And, you know, and, 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 and Howie's mindset and with, with the things that he's saying, this is what I'm taking from it. I'm taking that Howie Roseman is saying that we're going to go after big name free agents every year and put ourselves in position to take the best player available every year. And, you know, that makes sense, man. That's like a winning model, if you ask me. That's the attitude that says I want to continuously have talent on the field. I don't want to be like some of these guys who are struggling to have talent or some of these guys who are struggling to find their way out here. You know what I'm saying? You go out there and get Saquon Barkley. You go out there and get you a linebacker. You go get you a safety. Now you could kind of play around with, you know, uh, a Kool-Aid McKinstry or things of that nature. Even though you already got talent at the position like Slay and Bradbury, that's talent. No matter how you want to cut it. Keely Ringo, you know what I mean? Eli Ricks, you have talent at the position. You know what I mean? But you're in a position to go get BPA because you are always aggressive in free agency. So I like I like it, man. I like I like I like. I like the mindset. I like the philosophy, man. You know, and um, they asked Howie Roseman in this interview as well, you know, about drafting corners. Why does it seemingly feel like it was a joking man about Jeff McClain? Why does it seemingly feel like Howie Roseman hates to draft corners? Six drafts. You've only got drafted three cornerbacks and none of them higher than the fourth round. And any draft that you've ever seen, there's only been one that's been drafted in the second round. Uh, why do you hate cornerbacks? No, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> hate. Well, uh, you know, you, you, <laughs> you found you found alternative ways to kind of fill the position um, with varying degrees of success. What you know, what? How do you view that position and how you evaluate it? And um, you know, what what did you learn from past? mistakes and success and successes yeah uh, i think uh, that um obviously corners are a huge part of playing defense in the national football league right now um you know we always talk about uh, affecting the passing game and just like on offense we talk about the offensive line and having skilled guys we talk about the defensive line and having guys who can cover on the outside on the inside and how much that helps you you know um obviously Two years ago, I think we were number two in pass defense, and uh, we had two guys who won. I uh, was a second team. Number one. We were number one. Thank you, Ruben. Um, and, I, you know, we had uh, Slay made the Pro Bowl, and, and James was a, a second team all pro, you know, and I think that um, that just goes to show, you know, how, how important that is to playing good defense. So, um, always, uh, I felt that's a priority. Um, obviously, when you when you give those numbers, those, those are compelling. You know, we found different ways, um, and really going back to to me being here, and even as a personnel director, we we have signed some um, Pro Bowl caliber corners or traded for Pro Bowl caliber corners. So we've kind of probably done it a different way, but. Um, yeah, you're right. Obviously, the, those numbers are what they are. I mean, when you look at your target, did I answer that, Jeff? Was there any a second part of that? Yeah, well, just in terms of like, um, you know, you've had, uh, you know, some of them. I guess they're all different in terms of when they haven't panned out. Um, has there been a unifying theme in terms of when you looked at that position and maybe how you can look at it differently in terms of having success drafting at it? Yeah, and and some of those second day guys maybe had more success after they left here um, than they did here as well. Um, you know, so I think going back and looking at the things that you've missed on um, is important. And um, yeah, we've, we've certainly done that at the cornerback position. And you know, um, 
I feel how we Roseman on this. You know what I mean? He took full responsibility, but he's he, but he he is he's right about this. How we Roseman is right about the fact that he has given you know what I mean? The team talent at that position, but he just hasn't hit in the draft. And he did speak about sometimes guys, you know, going to other teams and making their bones after they lead the Philadelphia Eagles. The only person that I could think of that has done that is probably Rasul Douglas. It took him a while to develop. You know what I mean? We kept him around. We kept him along a little while, and it took him a while to develop. But you know, the best corner that he's drafted probably in his tenure was, you know, Jalen Mills. You got a Super Bowl out of him. So is he really that bad at drafting corners? You know what I mean? Or, or does he rely on being being able to grab some of those guys in free agency you know he does it slay bradbury you know um two years ago the philadelphia eagles were number one in pass defense slay made the pro bowl bradbury was an all pro you know what i mean he was able to get like great great series of play out of some of these guys you know guys that he was able to find in free agency but you know he fully stood in front of it he said the numbers are what the numbers are you know what i mean we don't hit at that position in the draft for some reason and, you know i think howie roseman is, is is uh is a man of pride i think moving forward he's going to be destined to try to make that not be the case but, you know um they also asked howie about you know um drafting for scheme like howie, when you look at this turnover at the defensive coordinator spot here. How do you balance wanting to get players that might fit a, a scheme or a system versus realiz the realization that these players might not last on coaches? Yeah, well, um, you know, obviously you have a lot of faith in, in our coaches and um, everything we're doing here is uh, to do something not only for the short term, but the long term. And, um, you know, with Coach Fangio, taking over our defense um his influence has been on our previous defense coordinators as well so it's not like we're, we're starting from scratch um and so i think it's important that we're not bringing in players who just that we like but also kind of fit what we're trying to do defensively and so you know coach sirianni does a great job uh, of having that interaction on a continuous basis between us and the coaches and um, obviously, we talk all the time, and, and it's just important, you know, if you if you bring in a really good player who doesn't fit what you're trying to do offensively or defensively, it just may not work. And um, just because somebody's having a lot of success somewhere else in a particular scheme or system doesn't mean that the flip side would also work here. You know, well, how we touched on that a little bit, saying that, you know, um, you you know, well, how he's well, how he's saying is making sense. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to draft guys that fit what Vic Vangio was trying to do. You got to draft guys that fit with fit what everybody's trying to do, whether it's Sean Desai, Jonathan Gannon. You have to get guys that could play that scheme. You know what I mean? And the Philadelphia Eagles, I think they'll get that right this year. They're not going to go for popular picks. They're going to go for guys who can thrive in the scheme, which is why I still think a guy like Justin Simmons is in play free agency-wise. And you know, um, how we spoke about the risk assessment for contracts. I think this was the biggest talking point and the biggest nugget that I got out of this, you know what I mean, interview by Howie Roseman today. Howie, whenever you, uh, um, I'll call. Whenever you have as many contract extensions as you do, what goes into the risk assessment of having that many? What risks are you accepting in those? Well, I think first, a uh, tremendous amount of credit uh, goes to Jeffrey Lurie, you know, and allowing us to be aggressive and um, do these contracts early. And uh, really, when you, you're able to do that and able to be in a position to lock down the caliber players that we think we've locked down over the last couple of weeks. It really uh, gives you tremendous flexibility as you build your team going forward. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a great success story for us to be able to draft guys and sign them to extensions. I think it's a great message to our team that if you come here and you do the right thing, you don't have to leave. And uh, obviously, um, unfortunately, we've lost two players, two of the greatest Eagles um, in in the history of our franchise, who've retired, but they played with one franchise. We, you know, we, we're very optimistic that we'll have two of those other guys who will end up doing that. And so, I think that's legacy. You know, to have be able to have players that are able to do that, and when other players see that. Um, I think that that's a big part of building culture. So I think that's important, important and that's, that starts with Jeffrey because if we didn't have somebody who was willing um, to do that and to allow us to sign guys early, and when you sign guys early, you know, you're obviously hoping that um, – the player is going to get a really good deal because, you know, obviously you, you want to work for both sides and that we're able to spread out the cap hits and be able to get other players. And so by doing these deals early, we're hopeful that, um, you know, we're, we're, we believe in the players we're doing it with and we're hopeful that it'll allow us to continue to add to our team. Yeah, but it all starts with Jeffrey. When you, talk you know, he talked about, you know, leading off with this, you know, um, by him saying that it, it's thanks to Jeffrey Laurie, you know, um, it, it lets me believe that, a lot of teams are ran by owners 
who abuse power and don't put you know winning as the ultimatum you know what i mean winning is the the, the, the be the end all be all but then at the same time the philadelphia eagles job was done it was easy well you could draft for jordan mylotta you could draft for Devontae smith you could draft for landon dickerson you know what i'm saying you you could you you could got the opportunity to go get saquon barkley you could draft a jalen hurts you know these are guys you have to extend so you know what i mean these guys performed and these guys earned their money so that makes it easier on the franchise but you still have guys that end up playing for other teams simply because ownership doesn't prioritize keeping core guys together you know what i mean and nick sirianni talked about this a little bit in the press conference as well the importance of keeping the core guys together you know what i mean it's exciting for the players it's exciting for continuity purposes and things of that nature so you know um i i think that you know i like the transparency from nick and uh howie roseman doing these press conferences i mean they got nothing to lie about you know they're doing their job you know howie roseman is doing his job and getting the talent on the field the eyes is going to be pointed at nick sirianni and the coaching staff this year Howie Roseman did his job and he will continue to do his job every week. He will continue to try to find ways to make this fr this roster better so we could bring a Super Bowl to the city of Philadelphia. But, you know, it all boils down to what this coaching staff is going to do and how they deem this season as important and how they deem this season as not wasting the talent that we got. You got a lot of people making a bag, a lot of people making big bread this season big bread this season all the way through 2028 you got some core guys that's locked up that's gonna be making big money you gotta find a way to win you gotta find a way to get into i i think before 2028 you gotta be in at least two super bowls with the amount of guys you got locked up you know what i mean you gotta be in at least two super bowls that's just my opinion you gotta win two or you gotta go to one and win one you can't come out of this thing without a super bowl before 2028 that's just my opinion man but let me know what y'all think in the comments man and make sure Y'all go out there and stream Got Some, myself, D'Angelo Xavier on all streaming platforms. You know the vibes.